Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Nathan Daly. I am your law enforcement translator. You guys, I'm here to provide insight on all these difficult topics plaguing our nation. <laughs> and I'm giving you insight from the perspective of a law enforcement. You guys, 13 year veteran here. I have a lot to say. What are we talking about today? Listen, man, I heard about this whole Chris Brown thing. I normally don't really like talking about celebrities, but in a situation like this, it's very important that we have this conversation. You know, Chris Brown was accused of sexual assault, right? The allegations, and we know how powerful an allegation is, especially coming from a woman involving a man as a suspect, as an offender, you guys. Very, very powerful words. <laughs> a woman's tongue can be sharp, you guys. It's a powerful weapon, you know? And, you know, we're going to talk about a few things, you guys. I'm going to touch on a few things. This is something we're going to do a live stream on because I feel like we need to dive into it. So before I get into it, let me shout out to my subscribers, you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for hanging in with me. I know we have a lot of crazy conversations, and I really appreciate it. You guys, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you a part of this journey. So with that being said, Chris Brown. I want to go over this article by NBC. I think they did a great job covering it. All right, so let me tell you how this whole thing unfolded, right? I'll give you the brief background. This happened last year in December, right? Chris Brown was at a party, attending a party on P. Diddy's property. Across from his property, I guess he has his yacht. They got on the yacht. They're having a good time. Chris Brown met with a, a, a singer. I think she's a singer, a model, one of those up and comings, right? Singer, model, choreographer. She has all these little talents, right? That type, right? And so... She meets with Chris Brown. She said that Chris Brown wanted to speak to her, give her some advice on her career path, how to navigate in this profession, right? Since she's trying to do all these things. So then she's talking about how the conversation started off very sweet, innocent. They start drinking. Chris Brown's filling up her drink. And on the second drink, she starts feeling a little funny, right? She's alleging that Chris Brown spiked her drink, drugged her. This is what she's saying, you guys. I'm going to pull up the article because I want to read to you what she actually said, the story that she painted in the lawsuit, right? She's asking for you guys $20 million. <laughs> $20 million. The power. The power of a woman's words. Let's break down what the lawsuit says. What does she say? Uh, let's talk about this foolishness. She's going by Jane Doe, you guys. So um, in the documents, you'll see Jane Doe. What does she say? She felt disoriented, physically unstable. She started to fall in and out of sleep. Now, this is what she's saying in the lawsuit. Uh, she says that in that moment, Chris Brown, as she's starting to fall asleep, he grabs her and starts to lead her down a corridor. Mind you guys, they're on a yacht. They're on a yacht. She says they get into the bedroom. He closes the door. And then prevents her from leaving when she tries to leave. You guys, that's false imprisonment, right? Right off the bat, that's false imprisonment. What else does it say? It says that as she is trying to leave, he throws her on the bed and begins to remove her clothes. She's wearing a bikini, right? He begins to derobe her. What does she do now? She's saying that as she's still kind of going in and out of sleep, she mumbles to him and says, hey, Chris Brown, can you please stop? Can you please stop? This is what she's putting into this report, you guys. This is wild. This is wild. The lawsuit then alleges Chris Brown jumped on top of her and then proceeded to sexually assault her, you guys. This is what she's alleging. Then she states after he was finished, he got up and said, hey, you can call me about this career stuff in the music industry. That's what she said. You know, she put this entire story together, you guys, but there's a problem with this story because just a few days later, what happened? She's contacting him again. She's begging for more sex. She's saying, hey, listen, Chris Brown, this is the best sex I've ever had. I need more. Please give me more. This is what she's saying. You guys, she starts literally harassing him. He has messages. She leaves him voice messages over and over again repeatedly asking for another continuance to meet up again. Hey, can we get together again? I miss you. You know, she's doing all this begging, graveling. What happens, you guys? What is, what, what's the real issue here? Chris Brown played her. He ghosted her. He never responded. He took the box and he bounced, right? 
He's doing what thoughts do. Listen, when two thoughts come together, they, 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 they activate their thought energy. What did he do? Right? He's being what he he's being Chris Brown. Right? Chris Breezy. He's in, he's out. He's in like the wind. He's gone, you guys. This is he's a professional thought. <laughs> That's a thought slayer. That's what he is. But what happened? Chris Brown hits back. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not having this. We're not having this. Mind you, this allegation is severe, you guys. You sit here and you make an allegation of sexual assault on a man. That's a really big deal, especially a man of status, a man of means. It impacts everybody the same across the board, whether you have money or not. But the reality is he's at risk, his career, his reputation behind this allegation. She's suing him for $20 million. And on top of that, what is she alleging the crime? The crime that she's alleging that took place, she is suing him for... Sexual battery, rape, right? Sexual assault, false imprisonment, emotional distress, and lastly, violation of the gender violence statute, whatever that is. She's seeking $20 million. Mm. You know, what did he say? What's his pushback? Chris Brown collects all of the text messages, you guys. She said, hey, missing you. We were honestly the best blank I've had. I just wanted again. You guys, this is days after her alleged being sexually assaulted, right? She's sending him text messages. You know, they got the voice message here. You could play it. I'm not going to play it because I don't know how YouTube be acting funny. You guys, what's the problem with this? What's the problem with this? You know, fellas, I tell I tell the young men all the time when I'm when I'm talking to them, mentoring them about sexual discipline and how important that is as a man to have. You know, one of these things that I see often in these situations, you guys investigating sexual assaults, I'll tell you a commonality that I really recognize that I recognize often is that you are at greater risk as a man to be accused of sexual assault on these one night stands than you are in any other situation. Granted, we know it's illegal to sexually assault a woman. We know that a woman intoxicated cannot give consent. So what is this problem about you guys? Men, you have to be careful. You have to be mindful. When you come out here on the prowl and you are hunting for sex, this is a potential problem you're going to run into. This is Pandora's box that you open up out here running up and down the streets trying to be a thought slayer. You guys, this is the risk that you run. When you don't properly vet, when you don't properly get to know and identify the person that you're engaging in intimacy with. You guys, this is the risk that you run. I've seen so many situations where guys are so lost in the moment, right? That they end up getting robbed by these women, robbed or set up to be robbed by other men. Listen, this is what Cardi B said. She used, to draw, she used to drug and rob men. This is a very, very known thing that women do. They use their body as a way to lure and distract men and turn around. These men are thinking that they're about to have an amazing good time. And then next thing you know, they're being, they're being robbed, you know? So um, it's a dangerous game when you want to come out here and play Thought Slayer, right? So, you know, Chris Brown knows the risk that he runs when he does that, like any other celebrity. At the same time, there's no justification for the lie. All right? There's no excuse. These women are criminal, right? These people are criminals. This is what they do. Always looking for payout. $20 million. You guys, but listen, let's run it back, though. When you look at the story that she painted for the police, for this lawsuit, you guys, it's very sick, twisted, sinister. The fact that you can sit there and put together such an elaborate story, you guys, <laughs> makes you wonder if she's done this before or she knows someone who's done it and got away with it, who, who's made money off of it. This is it's pure vindictive behavior. And what's happening now is that the power of a woman's words, you guys, it holds so much weight, especially in the criminal justice system, especially in the courts. Men have to be mindful. You know, this should be a situation now where she should be arrested and held accountable. This should be a two to three year prison sentence guaranteed across the board for women who make false accusations like this, who lie on people, on men. You guys, I believe this, this is something 
that should be arrestable, you know, in order to discourage people from doing this. I hope that Chris Brown follows up with this and, um, you know, file some charges against her. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, this is this whole Jussie Smule foolishness, right? We just believe what these people say without doing our due diligence. And then people are shocked when you find out that they lied. You know, this situation on this grand scale, she should be held accountable. Period, you guys. And listen, I'm not going to make this too long. I just wanted to touch on this. I just saw the article. It blew me away. Uh, I'm glad that he had the evidence to back his, uh, his story to, to really protect him. Um, this kind of reminds me of, you know, Drake when he's putting the hot sauce and the condom or, you know, the baby with his situation, the domestic issue where he recorded the entire scene because he didn't want anyone making any false allegations that he struck somebody and things of that nature. Listen, this is shame, you know, but men understand this. You have to be careful. You have to do these things, you know, especially, you know, again, as celebrities, you you are held. Um, at a higher standard because the moment someone makes these allegations, you know, it's it can be problematic. You know, you can lose endorsements. You can lose um, funding. You can be arrested. You can be civil suit. Listen, what if he didn't have this evidence, you guys? What would have happened? He'd have been out $20 million. He would have had to settle, right? He probably would have had to settle out of court because he probably would not have any evidence to back. Now, the question is, did this woman have evidence to back? Is the word enough evidence to, you know, for this lawsuit? I don't know. I've seen people arrested with less, you guys, you know. So listen to the fellas, you know, be mindful. If you want to come out here and play Thought Slayer, you better be mindful of the games and the consequences. It's not worth it. You know, a lot of these um, false allegations, cases that I've seen, again, have come from guys who've lacked dick discipline. And they come out here and they got themselves in some trouble. They stuck. They dived into something that they couldn't swim out of, right? So anyways, you guys, that's it for this video. Let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Join this channel. And with that, you guys, good night and God bless.